Let's begin the read of chapter 13, section 2. Section 2 deals with stream erosion and deposition. Of all the agents of erosion, running water is the most effective. Gravity draws surface water downhill, eroding soil and rock material along the way. These materials are deposited when a river or stream no longer has enough energy to transport them. The process by which materials are deposited is called deposition. How streams weather and erode material. Running water in streams and rivers wears down Earth's surface by breaking up bedrock and removing eroded rock and soil materials. Running water breaks up the bedrock over which it flows primarily by mechanical means. Rapidly flowing water has a lifting effect that can split off and move rock fragments. However, most erosion occurs when running water abrades and hammers away at its bed by using sand, pebbles, and even boulders as cutting tools. Abrasion also wears down the cutting tools themselves, especially at their edges. In time, abrasion produces the rounded boulders, pebbles, and sand grains that are commonly found in the beds of streams and rivers. Cutting tools are involved in the formation of potholes in the bedrock of a river. These deep oval or circular basins are formed when water in a river develops small whirlpools. As sand, pebbles, and small boulders swirl around in the whirlpools, they grind potholes in the bedrock. The cutting tools that have formed a pothole are often found at its bottom. Potholes occur in many different types of rock and range in size from potholes in the James River at Richmond, Virginia that have been ground out of hard granite. Most of these potholes are relatively shallow because granite is resistant to weathering. Potholes in the Mohawk River Valley near Little Falls, New York have been ground out of limestone. Some of these potholes are very deep because limestone is more easily weathered. A plunge pool is a basin that has been worn away at the base of a waterfall by the action of falling water. Abrasion by churning particles also plays a part in forming a plunge pool. Many waterfalls have plunge pools. One example is Tahonic Falls in New York. Running water's chemical weathering of bedrock consists of dissolving soluble minerals Limestone and marble, as well as sandstone that are held together with calcite cements, are affected when rivers flowing over them form pits and holes in the riverbed. The running water also widens existing cracks and holes. In the sandstones, the water dissolves the cement and leaves the sand to be picked up mechanically by the running water. Here's a picture of a pothole, and you notice the uh, boulder that probably ground this hole, along with some of the smaller rocks here. Pothole may form in the bedrock of a river when rock particles are churned about by whirlpool action. How streams transport material. The eroded rock and soil materials that are transported downstream by a river are called its load. A river transports or carries its load in three different ways, in solution, in suspension, and in its bed load. Mineral matter that has been dissolved from bedrock is carried in solution. Common minerals carried in solution by rivers included dissolved calcium, magnesium, and bicarbonate. Most of a river solution load comes from groundwater seeping into the river. Before it reaches a stream, the groundwater has traveled through fractures in the bedrock, chemically eroding rock along the way. When river water looks muddy, it is carrying rock material in suspension. Suspended material includes clay, silt, and fine sand. Although these suspended materials are heavier than water, the turbulence of the stream flow stirs them up and keeps them from sinking. Turbulence includes swirls and eddies 
that form in water as a result of friction between the stream and its channel. The faster a stream flows, the more turbulent and muddy it becomes. A rough or irregular channel also increases turbulence. A river may also transport rock material and its bed load. The bed load consists of sand, pebbles, and boulders that are too heavy to be carried in suspension. These heavier materials are moved along the stream bed, especially during floods. Boulders and pebbles roll or slide along the riverbed. Large sand grains are pushed along the bottom in a series of jumps and bounces. The relative amounts of a river's load that are carried in solution, in suspension, and in the bed load depend on the nature of the river, the climate, the type of bedrock, and the season of the year. As a general rule, most of the load carried by the world's streams and rivers is carried in suspension. The size of a river suspended load increases with human land use. Road and building construction and removal of vegetation make it easier for rain to wash sediments into streams and rivers. In this illustration, a stream transports rock material in solution, in suspension, and in its bed load. And we can illustrate that. The flow, the water itself, carries materials in solution. The suspension, silt and clay, smaller particles here, and the bed load as these rocks tumble along the bed or the bottom of that river. Two measures are used to describe the ability of a stream to transport materials. Competence is a measure that describes the maximum size of the particles a stream can carry. Capacity is a measure of the total amount of sediment a stream can carry. The competence and capacity of a stream depend on the stream's velocity and discharge. Because the velocity and discharge of a given stream are not constant, the competence and capacity of a stream are not constant. Competence and capacity vary along a stream and change throughout the year. Streams moving at high velocity with high discharge can carry a larger amount of sediment and larger sizes of sediment particles than slow moving streams with small discharge. When the velocity and discharge of a stream increase, the ability of the stream to carry larger particles in suspension increases as well. For example, during normal times, the lower Mississippi River may carry nothing larger than silt in suspension. During a flood, the river carries sand and pebbles as well. Because the competence and capacity of a stream increases during a flood, much of the erosion caused by moving water occurs during floods. At such times, a stream can erode more deeply into its channel. Stream deposition. Rock materials and sediments that are transported by rivers and streams are eventually deposited. A river will deposit a part of its load of sediment when either its velocity or its discharge decreases. A river's velocity may decrease if its channel widens or the river meets an obstruction in the form of a curving bank or a rock outcrop. For example, when a river rounds a bend, its velocity increases on the outside of the curve. Its velocity slows on the inside part of the curve. So sediments tend to be deposited there. However, the greatest decrease in a river's velocity occurs when it empties into a sea or a lake. At this point, most of the river's remaining sediment is deposited. A river's discharge may decrease when people divert water for irrigation or for city water supplies. Discharge may also decrease if the river passes through an arid region where it loses water by evaporation into the air and seepage into the ground. In humid regions, however, rivers usually grow larger as they approach a sea and are fed by new tributaries. Discharge and velocity increases during a flood. 
then decrease as flood water subsides. As the river's discharge and velocity decrease, the river deposits its load of sediment. Deposi depositional features. A delta is a fan-shaped deposit that forms when a river flows into a quiet or larger body of water, such as a lake, an ocean, or an island sea. The word delta comes from the Greek letter delta, whose shape resembles the shape of a river delta. The Mississippi, the Nile, the Ganges, and other large rivers have deltas where they enter large bodies of water. River water comes almost to a standstill at a delta where most of a river's sediment is dropped. As long as the amount of sediment supplied by the river is larger than the amount that can be taken away by currents, the deposit grows. A river flowing over its delta splits into branches called distributaries. The distributaries are responsible for the delta's shape. Their smaller channels bring sediment to the front of the delta. Delta formation is a delicate balance between deposition and erosion. Human use of rivers and deltas can cause a decrease in deposition, which leaves the delta more susceptible to wave and current erosion. This graphic illustrates delta formation. In step one, the velocity slows dramatically when a river meets a large body of water. Because of the decrease in velocity, sediments are deposited. Over time, the sediments build and forming a delta. A fan-shaped deposit called an alluvial fan may form when a steep mountain stream meets dry, level land at the base of a mountain. When it reaches the land, the stream's velocity decreases greatly. As a result, the stream drops a large amount of its sediment load. An alluvial fan differs from a delta in several ways. First, the deposit is formed on land, not in water. Second, the sediments are coarse sands and gravels rather than fine silt and clay. Third, its surface is sloping, not flat like that of a delta. This concludes the read for section 2 of chapter 13. At this time, use your note-taking guide to answer questions 1 through 7 on the back of your note-taking guide.